Parker. All right. This is Friday morning. It's our connections over coffee, our time to rise. And it's all about giving back and kindness and all those things to make the world a better place. And so, um, Carmela, give me a thumbs up if I can announce what you and I talked about early on. Yes. Can I announce that? She says yes. Carmela is going to be my co-moderator, co-facilitator for this group. And um, Sally is my co-moderator, co-facilitator for uh, our blogging group. But Carmela is going to be the co-mod for this group. And um, we just chatted earlier today about that. And so I'll be including her uh, in the material. So the first thing I want to do is I just kind of want to show you the material just so that everyone is on the same page and you can kind of see where we're at. So again, I'm going to share my screen. And I always say this that it takes a minute for my screen to come up whenever I am on a Zoom call. So bear with me. Um, and this is the first thing I wanna show you. Um, this is, and I'll scroll back up so that you can see the whole thing. This is the International Academy. This is where you're going to find us. So you see here on the URL at the top where my pointer is, is the Kathy Bitter International Academy .com. And, uh, it says that my Wi-Fi is a little shaky, so forgive me. I'm again, I'm in Florida. When you scroll down this left column, you will see connections over coffee, free meetup. And this is where we are right here in this thumbnail. And so when you open that thumbnail up, when you click on that, it actually takes you um, to this particular section in the academy and it tells what we're about. And it's our time to rise. It, we're an international virtual meetup where we'll simply network and develop relationships. There's no pressure, no sales, no feeling inadequate. We'll meet on Zoom monthly. And many of our meetups will have an entrepreneurial focus. However, everyone's welcome to come and check us out. And you'll see the word RISE is an acronym for a four-step process. It's to reconnect, impact, storify, and envelop elevate and you may wonder what all of that means well reconnect this is where you reconnect with your values and beliefs what really matters to you and what feels right it's where you decide who you want to be the difference you want to make the good you want to do and the legacy you want to be remembered for and it's also where you can if you want renew your commitment to doing your best in all those areas now, impact, this is where you make your business or your life, you don't have to have a business, more rewarding, successful, and impactful by becoming a business for good. It's where you'll see simple systems to put your values at the heart of everything your business does. It's kind of a heart-centered type um, view, which uh, everyone on this call has that. Um, and so this is a perfect place for you. Then you'll see how to automate those values into processes so that the good things happen, not by chance, but by design, your design, in a way that makes everything in your business or in your life, even the everyday activities, much more meaningful so that everyone in your circle of, of influence wakes up every morning with a smile on their face, a spring in their step, joy in their hearts, because they know they are helping to make the world a better place. And because they know they're working in a, in a business or in your circle, your sphere, that has been doing good and kindness right at its core. And then Storify, and this is where we are today, Storify, it, to find the right words, images, and numbers to tell the story of what you are doing in the most inspiring way without ever being boastful or arrogant so that your team, your friends, your family, they're all inspired, engaged, and motivated. And so that folks all around you are inspired to sing your praises, buy more from you or connect more with you and be more loyal. And other folks that are in your sphere will also follow your lead, becoming a part of the global uh, business for good movement. And so um, it's a way to get your story out. So what I did, and, and then of course, the step four is to elevate in the storify step, you passively inspire others to do great things. But in this entirely optional elevate step, you actively encourage others to rise. For example, you might choose to give away copies of the book rise and you can do that without uh, ever spending a penny. This is the book right here. The link is right here for the book rise and you can actually power a movement. Now it can be whatever, whatever your heart cares about 
you know, you can choose whatever movement you want. And we've had conversations on this call many times about, um, you know, where we want to kind of like put your money where your mouth is, so to speak, and where we want to contribute um, to, to do good, to do better in the world. And, uh, and so I want to show you a couple of things here. Here's where it says, please join us the third Friday of every month and to RSVP and get the Zoom code. Here's another way to get it. Um, so I'm not sure how each of you got it, but I'll show you our systems. Uh, so the first thing I want to show you is I clicked on the actual book and it takes just a minute to load. This is the book uh, called Our Time to Rise. And uh, as you can see right there in great big letters, it's trying to load. I wrote the foreword on this book. Here it comes. And so this is the book, Our Time to Rise. It's written by Steve Pipe and Paul Dunn. And if you click through on that link, you can actually, you can see here, it's downloadable. You can download the book if you want. Um, you can blow it up on your computer screen if you want to read it here. And if you scroll down uh, past the contents page, again, there's where I wrote the foreword for the authors, my, my good friends, um, Steve and Paul. And so there's the book. We also have a Facebook group, and I didn't know if all of you were aware of our Facebook group. We have a Facebook group called Connections Over Coffee, Our Time to Rise, and we have 631 members here in our Facebook group. And again, when you look about what we're about, it's the exact same description that I just went through. And then again, there's the link for the book, and there's the link for the meetup. And then we do have a meetup group. And again, the meetup group, it's its the same. It's Connections Over Coffee, the third Friday at 10. And again, when you get down here to what we're about, um, it's the same, again, exact description on what we're about. And here we have 221 members. And so you can see where we're growing. And what I wanted to show you then is starting in January, we're going to start having um, a little bit of a lesson um, either before or after we share. And it's going to be um, how to start a giving fund. And we're going to talk about creating a personal giving fund, setting up a group giving fund, and establishing a public charitable fund. And I've already established my first one. Um, for those of you that may recall, I had a real estate gal that was my co-mod, co-facilitator in my Happy House Hunters group, and she passed away um, a year ago, January, and so I created an actual scholarship uh, giving fund, and it's a, an actual public charitable fund. It's it, it, We have a PayPal account. We have, you know, an actual separate bank account. We're going to go through how to do all of that if any of you want to create something. Um, or you can participate in something that's already created. If you've got a passion, you know, um, for whatever, you can raise funds for whatever you would like to raise funds for to make the world a better place. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And um, I, just, I just want to share a little story myself is as I am jumping on Clubhouse and different podcasts, and I'm getting interviewed on different podcasts, um, I'm finding that my, I, I picked a word for 2022. Every year I have a word. Last year, my word was gratitude. This year in 2022, my word is giving. And I want to create more of a giving um, feeling, I guess, is the best way to say it. I want to create more of a giving feeling around all of my lanes. I don't want folks to feel like I am just trying to sell them something, sell them something because I'm not. I, 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 my passive income comes from my real estate. Um, that comes in every month. Now, again, I have to do some work there. Like I have a move out uh, currently going on and a rehab going on. And, and, you know, so I have some work to do there. But it's mostly passive for me. And that's where the bulk of my income comes from. And so I am able um, to really just give back in all of these lanes that you see on the Kathy Benner International Academy. And so that's why the things that I do have there for a price are very low price because I want everyone to be able to participate. And so anyway, when I've been on some of these other calls, um, I just need to um, kind of model myself after some of these other folks that I'm listening to as to what phrases they're using and, and, um, and you know, the, how it makes people feel. And I think 
That's the most important thing. At the end of the day, um, folks, they don't remember what you said. They don't really remember how you said it, but they remember how you made them feel. And so that's the most important thing to me is I want folks to feel like I am constantly bringing value and helping them rise in whatever it is, their endeavors and, and where they're headed and want them then to, to feel like they want to connect with me. So I want to go around the room and I want everyone to uh, just briefly get a chance to say good morning and, uh, and what's going on in your world and just build relationships. And um, Sally already shared that she was just a hint under the weather after getting her flu shot <laughs> that she was having some reactions. So um, Sally, uh, kudos to you. I hope you get to feeling better. Hopefully that'll pass soon. And is there anything? Go ahead. Is there anything you want to share this morning? Well, Ed's feeling better. He's feeling strong. So there's a lot that's happened in the past two weeks. So he ended up. Ed is my significant other. However, we're engaged to be married now. So we're. So he ended up in ICU, and then he asked me to marry him in ICU. <laughs> now I made sure he asked again when he wasn't under the influence of any drugs. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. But you know what? <laughs> having having those life changing type scenarios, you know, being in ICU, it does make you realign your priorities. And um, and I, I I'm happy to say that Ed had his priorities uh, straight. That he does not want to lose Sally. So uh, that was a yeah. good choice on Ed's part. <laughs> not that he was going to anyway. But I know. I know. Yeah, and actually, that's exactly what he said because he, when he came that close to dying, you know. Um, and we've both been through this with our late spouses. So, you know, we, we understand. But um, I also wanted to share with you what our family decided to do for Christmas is instead of present, even the grandkids, they're, they're 20, 21. Um, we each put our name and the, the charity we donate to in a hat and we each pulled it out. So their Christmas present is a donation in their name to whatever charity they said they wanted. Like I did Bottoms Up Driver, Diaper Drive and Matt did Fairhope, Fairhope Hospice and Laura did Charity Newsies. So those are the, the places that are important to us. So that's what we're doing for Christmas. I think that's a wonderful idea. I love that. I love that. And I think all of us can utilize that at some level. That's a, yeah. that's a wonderful so that's, that's what, well, that doesn't stop me from buying little presents, you know. Because so, you know what, you want to you want to give, I get it, I get I, it, yeah. yeah. But I thought that was a great thing to do, because uh, my brother-in-law always gives for food for the poor. Um, so, you know, we have our, I think, uh, at the St. Jude's. Okay. Yep, those are all great contributions. I love that. I love that a lot. Um, I, again, my girlfriend, she talks about us living in a boomerang society that, you know, whatever you throw out there is going to come back. I like to talk about it as the law of reciprocation, where whatever you give, you get. And so if you need more money, you have to give more money. If you need more time, you have to give more time. If you need a car, you have to give a car. That one's a little tougher. But you know what? We've, we've had that happen. I have a girlfriend, she needed a car so desperately, and another person actually gave her a car. And so those, those things do happen, and uh, they're incredibly rewarding, uh, not only to the recipient, but to the giver. And, uh, and then once this person gave away their car, they actually received a better car. <laughs> so it just, again, what you give is what you get. So those are great stories. Um, Kyle, how about you? What would you like to share today? Um, well, what we do, what our family does annually, um, we do two things. So on, uh, we usually do, we started this tradition thing on Thanksgiving too. Um, we go volunteer at the, uh, the middle Ohio food bank here, local here, uh, out here in Grove city. And we do that on, uh, we, and we do that. We did on Thanksgiving and they do Christmas dinners and they do Christmas breakfast in the mornings. And we'll go out for like four hours. Um, my mom initially she does it 
she's on she she goes there on regular she's retired so that's okay. like her thing that's like her thing to do and that kind of that drew us in um to be involved because she's involved with it heavy you know every day um and then we we have we we, we have an adoptive family that we um that we provide for a family it's a, uh, it's a family of four and um we they we just you know they they provide the list and um we just go out and we you know some of the items that we have already um that we we just we you know that we just you know what we was going to donate um but we just you know we provide that for them and you know we make sure that children is you know squared away for you know for this holiday season so um but that's pretty much what we do as far as like uh, as far as us giving back you know doing our part so that's huge that's huge that helps so many folks and especially that family that you've taken under your wing that is just huge during this time and uh, and again we all have to decide what we can give within our own budgets you know we have to make sure our family is taken care of as well um but again we are as as my girlfriend likes to say in that boomerang or I like to say that reciprocity, that wall of reciprocity. So thank you for that. That's great. That's perfect. Carmela, how about you? Hopefully I won't cut in and out. Like I said, right now we're on 70 and I'm on my way to Maryland because we're having windows put in tomorrow. They finally came in. Okay. But um I try this year, I'm unfortunately, I'm not able to be there at our church. Um, they're giving out like dinners and doing things and kind of help, you know, giving to those that need. And I was at an event last Saturday. It was like, I was busy from 9 a.m. until 9 p.m. I had like three different things to do. <laughs> but um, they were talking about, you know, it's more than just gifts because you have some people that's just going out and still doing the thing with spending, but it's almost like, you know, Sally, I like that idea. They were talking about, you know, giving, you know, things to charity. Of course, I have like a couple things that I'm involved with. Of course, you guys know the Alzheimer's, but then also St. Jude, because I had a chance, a group of girlfriends and I, we went to um, St. Jude's Hospital there in Memphis two years ago because a friend of mine's son, um, right after his 18th birthday, he died and he was back and forth sick. But we said, we wanna go back again every year. Of course, COVID happened and we have like events, you know, we will play bingo with them, like the family, something to kind of take their minds off of things. Um, I played games with like the kids there in this one open area the hospital uh, but my heart just I'm an emotional person anyway so I cry at everything but I really want to continue and do more you know helping out in that area even locally in Lima with a lot of you know but yeah I just I guess my heart I like giving back and um, I had a friend she's been going through a lot and this year she always takes like snapshots of me with her phone and i know she's into photography and i was going to so i had a camera i was going to be getting rid of but i prayed about it and it was like you know i need to give this story you know it's been sitting there brandon never you know it's really i think i used it twice so i wrapped it up and that was like her gift and she's like i'm so undeserving of this and i'm like you don't know you know, you can't say that because you don't know what your blessing is and not being, you are deserving of it, you know, of so many things. And she started crying and I says, this is just going to take you to even bigger heights because I remember helping out a friend's son when he was in high school. And I think he's almost 30 because Jay to be 30 and they're like real close in age. And now he's this he was just thanking people and he actually thanked me. He says, you and your husband, you know, kind of showed me what it was like to be business people. And, you know, just those things when I was younger, 
And now here he is like on the news. He's like this big photographer. He does all of this stuff. And it makes me feel good and smile that it's like, I didn't think I did much, but just that little bit. And they just go with it. And, you know, it's such a blessing, you know. And as my contractor says, his favorite saying now, he says, it's a blessing to be a blessing. And I'm like, I need to get a t-shirt made like that, Mm -hmm. you know, that says that. I agree. That's, that's powerful. That's very powerful, Carmela. Um, I remember when I talked with Mark, who is my significant other, um, he is a 30 year retired teacher. And he says, it's so hard to know what kind of an impact we've had on folks over the years, just, you know, giving and, and him being a teacher, you know, he, he took a lot of his students under his wing and, and really helped them get get established. He was an industrial arts teacher. And so he oftentimes got the students in his class that wasn't doing well in their other studies. And the teachers knew that these students possibly might struggle even uh, deciding to go to college or being college material. And they would recommend that they, you know, maybe take a more of a hands-on type approach um, because the teachers, of course, wanted all of these students to be um, successful once they graduated and to be able to support themselves and in, in whatever they wanted to do. And so a lot of those students Mark took under his wing because they were struggling in their other courses. And, uh, and many of them uh, came through and are in the trades today because of those classes. And oftentimes when Mark and I are locally out to dinner or uh, just hanging out at a local park, we'll run into some of his previous students who are now, <laughs> and Mark's feeling really old, who are now parents and grandparents. <laughs> Mark is like, there's no way I had students that are now grandparents, but yeah, some of his students are now grandparents, and, um, and, and they come and sing his praises on how if it wouldn't have been for him, they wouldn't be where they are today, and he is just shocked at some of those comments because he said he had no idea the impact that he was making at that time um, because he was basically just doing his job, but he cared about the students, and it showed. And so we never know. We never know what kind of an impact we're going to have on folks Mm -hmm. on on how we give. And so I think that's important. Um, We see, uh, I see we have Raj with us. Raj, can you hear us? Hey, Kaji. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Hi. Can can we see you or are you not at a place where you can flip your camera on? Uh, Actually, I am not in a shape, good shape right now. So that's why I am not referring to switch on the camera. Though okay. Can, yeah, it's too cold out here. Let me show you my pretty face if you guys really wanted to watch. Yeah. Oh, there you are. Okay. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I I love that um that you're with us today. So, uh, what are your thoughts today? We're uh, I don't know if you heard the very beginning. We're talking about our time to rise, our time to give back, make the world a better place, and how we are giving in our own lives. Uh, Would you like to share? Absolutely, Katie. And I am a firm believer in that. I believe in giving back in any form. And there are so many different forms that we can give back. It may be in the form of financial help. It may be in the form of services or you know being part of some sort of non-government organization ngo i myself a i am a technical architect you know i work with different technological companies i design technology solutions for them but at the same time i make sure that i am giving some sort of education like it's my dream that everybody every child on this earth they should have access to the education they should get access. Yes, education should be given to each and every kid in this world. And that's my dream. So what I do, I will, I have collaborated certain colleges, universities in my different countries. And I always try to give some time to them. I always try to teach them and I always try to guide them. So it's my dream. So this is how I give back. Apart from that, I have two beautiful daughters. One is 10, one is five. I have a beautiful wife and I love my family. 
so we are having a big christmas tree in our home we started decorating it with so many ornaments and we do so many things as a family but at the same time like i said i always believe in giving back to the society so yes i do that i love that thank you so much raj um we're going to go around and we're going to talk about where everybody is is from and and carmela shared a little bit where she's heading to and we're going to talk about that in a minute but um raj i just want to mention that um with b1 g1 and i don't know if you're familiar with that i don't know if it's something that might interest you because i'm not sure exactly where you are in systematically giving education but b1 g1 is um international giving group that you can choose what impacts you want to make around the world and i have chosen b1 g1 as um, my main giving platform and what I do is every time someone joins one of my masterminds, I give a portion of the mastermind membership money automatically. I have it set up where it automatically goes to education around the world and I can actually go into the B1G1 platform and I can choose um, what impacts I want to make in what countries that I want to give. And then they actually give me uh, kind of a world map that kind of shows how many impacts I've made. So um, um, before we go back around the room, I do want to share that. And I didn't have that one pulled up. So bear with me and let me get rid of some of my um, other <laughs> links up here as I. So I don't have so many things open. Sorry about that. And I can show you how that looks under B1G1. Can everyone hear me okay? It says that I have uh, a low quality audio. This is my web. And when you scroll down my website, just down the home page, um, and again, this all matches the academy, but there's a section here. And uh, again, it's loading slowly. As you scroll down my homepage, past my podcast and my blogs and all of that, it comes to this, uh, the Kathy Benner International Academy is giving back. And this is the story of B1G1. And so I'm gonna scroll back up because I wanna show you that giving map. And it's, it's, it really makes you feel like you've made a dent. Here's my menu here at the top. And when I click on my menu and go to my giving back page, uh, again, it talks about the B1G1 and giving an impact, but this is my impact map. Um, here's where I am in the Columbus, Ohio area. And every time I donate, it shows where my donations have gone around the world. So all the way here to New Zealand and here's Australia. And you can see how many places around the world uh, my giving has made an impact. And so I think that's important is not only to give, but um, again, like with Mark, um, he said it was it was so, so good when he realized that he had made an impact on some of those students. And so I think we need to um, uh, to kind of realize how much of an impact and it is hard to make that sometimes. And I think it's important to know that we're making a difference. And I think that inspires us and inspires others to continue to make a difference. So I'll just toss that out there. I don't know if you have a formal way to give to education around the world, Raj. You've talked about different countries that you're working in. And so as we start in January, we're gonna start talking about how to create some of that giving in a formal type way where you can create your own nonprofit if that's what you want to do so you can you can tap in or out at any level and i guess that's what i want to say and so if you're looking for a formal way to create giving uh, we're going to talk about how to do that now we're not going to spend the whole the whole of meeting each month talking about it we're going to share and build relationships as well but we will have a section on how to build some of those platforms so with that, I want to go back around. Sally, tell us where you're actually located and, um, and what's, the, what's the weather like there? <laughs> I'm in Canal Winchester, like Kathy is when she's not in Florida. The weather is um, 
partly cloudy today, a little cool. Okay. Well, I currently am in Sarasota, Florida, USA, and um, believe it or not, it is only 67 degrees here in Bayfield Gardens, um, but we are expecting a high of 80 um, by this afternoon. So um, I normally am in central Ohio, the Columbus, Ohio area in Canal Winchester, just about maybe three miles from Sally normally. And um, but I'm in Sarasota. Uh, we're we're half time in Ohio and half time in Sarasota. Uh, and again, this was part of my retirement gift to Mark um, was to get him away from all of his projects and get on with retirement a little bit. We both have a tendency to work a little too hard. So, so we're trying to make that transition. Um, Kyle, how about you? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm here. Uh, I currently reside in Grove City. And, okay. uh, yeah, right out here in Grove City, um, like, you know, maybe less than 40 minutes from like Deer Creek. So mm -hmm. it's, it's like a sunny, very, uh, it's, it's a sunny, pleasant December day here. You know, it's not quite, you know, sunshine and rainbows, but, you know, it's, it's, it's pleasant, you know, for, you know, considering how, what it could be, you know, so yeah, I can't complain. Yes, and so Kyle, you're in Central Ohio as well. As well, we're on the southeast corner of Columbus, Ohio, and you're on the southwest corner of Columbus, Ohio. So yes, welcome. Thank you for joining us. And Carmela, tell us where you normally are, and I know you're on the road to Maryland. And tell us why you're on the road to Maryland. Um. Well, I normally live in Lima, Ohio, Northwest Ohio. When I left this morning, it was freezing. So, <laughs> and I left probably about seven. I was like behind my scheduled time of leaving this morning. So actually it was my fault and, and I can't blame Farley for this. Um, we're on our way to Maryland. We have a house in Maryland, which I've spoken about that I've been trying to turn into an Airbnb, but then COVID hit. We ordered windows for the house back in June. And they just called and said, we're, they're in. Can you come so we can install them? <laughs> so, hence, we're on our way to Maryland driving. Farley's going to head back, fly back to Lima, Ohio, tomorrow because he's in court on Monday. He has a couple hearings. And then he will fly back to meet me on Tuesday. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Jade, our daughter, which you know. She flew out today. Her flight left Columbus. She lives in Columbus in Upper Arlington, um, Dublin area. But she flew out today to Miami, Florida with some girlfriends for one of her girlfriend's bachelor party. But everything's backwards because she's already gotten married. Now she's pregnant. Now they're having the bachelor party. <laughs> so, I, I just don't understand. <laughs> Uh, but hey, I guess that's what 30 year olds do now. But um, that's funny. she's fly she's flying in. She was going to have a layover in Baltimore on Monday. So now I'm picking her up from the airport. I told her, you can Uber, but um, it's only a 40 minute drive. So we're actually going to end up spending Christmas in Maryland at the house there. Okay. And then With we no will windows. come. <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> well, the, hopefully they'll have them all in by tomorrow. They said it'd take them one day to get them in. So I'm like, the weather's supposed to be like in the 60s there. Okay. Um, yes, actually, yesterday it was like 70, which is shocking. So I packed like I don't even know this. My car is completely full because I don't know if I need warm clothes or something for something cooler because it's crazy and. I told Jade we might go see the Nutcracker. This is a different version. We've gone for years since she was little, but this Nutcracker has clowns in it. Not much of a clown person, but it's interesting. So we're spending the holidays here. And then once I get back, I'll celebrate the holidays with my family, you know, my brothers and everything and my parents. But you know what? You're making memories. I love that. This yeah, is going to be a very memorable Christmas. Yes. 
I would like to incur on a side note, I would like to encourage you to call your house in Maryland a short term rental instead of an Airbnb, because okay. Once you get up and running, you actually can list it on a lot more channels than just Airbnb. Well, and you know what? That's kind of good because in my research, um, because we don't live there on a regular basis, I can only rent it out 90 days out of a year uh -huh. in, that, in that area. But if we live there, I can rent it out 120. So... I'm trying to talk Jade. She likes big cities and she's younger. I'm like, do you want to live there part of the time? <laughs> I get it. I get it. And there's, there's requirements. And again, a whole different channel, a whole different lane. There's all kinds of requirements everywhere on short-term rentals. And, um, but, but anyhow, we, we should talk and explore that a little bit. Yes. Because there, there's some things you can do there. Most definitely. Yeah. I can, I can help you rent that more than 90 days. Yeah, we'll have to on, talk. Yeah, we'll have to talk. And, and, and then again, that's another whole lane. When you guys were seeing my academy, there's a whole lane on short-term rentals. So if any of you are interested in that lane, I can help with that. Um, Raj, how about you? Where are you located? And what? And I know you said it was it was freezing where you are. Yes, yes. I'm in Cincinnati. It's okay. Cold. Yeah, it's 39 today. I'm okay. I have I have been in three different countries. I was born and brought up back in India. Then I was in Sweden, Stockholm. And now I am in the state since last almost 10 years. And I have traveled over 30 states here in America. And uh, so right now I am in Cincinnati. Yeah. What made you choose Cincinnati, Ohio of all the places in the world? What made you choose <laughs> It's not me. It's not me who chose the place. It's my work who chose it for me. So the kind of work I do, I do projects for different companies. So depending on the project duration, I have to be there, you know, so that's why. And I love traveling. I have traveled almost 30 states here in America. And uh, I have some of the countries in my bucket list to visit very soon. So hopefully I would be there. Yeah. Well, welcome. So um, all of you are in Ohio, except Carmela's traveling, and I'm the only one that's, that's out, you know, all the way down in Florida at the moment. But um, again, I'm trying to encourage an international academy, and so I, I have some students in some of my other lanes that are from India that are actually physically located in India. And so it's always a struggle for me um, to choose the right time of day to have a meetup so that everyone can participate. Um, and, and, and you have to look at, you know, all the time zones across the world uh, because you don't want someone, uh, you don't want to have to invite someone to tap in at 3 a.m. <laughs> in the middle of their sleep time. So I, I try to create some times that fit across the board and that's always a struggle, um, but welcome. So. Raj, I'm sure you can appreciate all those different time zones, um, especially since you're from India and have traveled in several countries. Uh, it's always a struggle on, um, you know, kind of getting your, <laughs> getting back in sync with wherever you are. I think we're all creatures of habit and it's kind of comfortable to get into a routine. So that's always a struggle. Um, I love that all of you are on the call today. This is great. This is great. I love it. Um, I'd like to go around now and um, just talk about uh, what what was your favorite Christmas? Because um, I don't know if any of you or if all of us have heard about the five love languages. Has has there has everyone heard of that or no? Yes. No. Sally says yes. Um, there is a book called The Five Love Languages, and then there's several different other variations. It's The Five Love Languages for uh, teens and The Five Love Languages on the job. And, but if you just look at the basic book, it's an easy read, not a lot of pages. I didn't look it up. Um, and again, I can maybe look it up while we're chatting here. But The Five Love Languages talks about how all of us have one or two that is our primary. And so um, I'm just wondering if everyone kind of knows what you're here. Look at all the different variations and look at the stars. They get great reviews. Um, but anyway, these are the five love languages and I'll, I'll just open up this article here. 
And we have a tendency not only to um, give in our love languages, but also to receive. And I'm looking for the list of the languages here. I saw it in the article here. No, nope, it's got the book. Where are there? Here we are. So the first one is words of affirmation. Love languages. Um, I like to say it's a reason all the bars are full <laughs> because, you know, couples that will go to a bar because, you know, the girl is, is sitting there and the guy tells her how pretty she is and then he's hanging out. So see, there's some words of affirmation. And then, of course, you know, he's hanging out at the bar and maybe he buys her a drink. So now, you know, it's a gift and he's chatting with her he might put his hand over and all of a sudden she's feeling like this guy really cares about me because he's speaking all five of the love languages well when you are in a relationship whether it be with your children with your boss with your spouse it doesn't matter who you're with um you have a primary love language that's all yours and i'll give you two examples my first example is my daughter let me get rid of this little ad that popped up here my first example is my daughter because um she was about 14 and i would go off to work and i would say i just want you to get your room cleaned up before i get home and she would be like okay okay and i would get home and her room would be a terrible mess but she would meet me at the door with this little present that she made and she says mommy look i made you something and of course i was like really you think you could have cleaned up your room instead of spending all day making whatever this thing was? And so what happened was um, uh, my love language is, is help, is helping. And let's see if it's here. Words of affirmation, quality time, uh, receiving gifts, acts of service. And so mine is acts of service, which is helping. And hers is gifts. Now, it doesn't mean it's expensive gifts. It just means that that's her love language. She likes to give gifts. And even then, as a teenager, when one of her boyfriends would give her a card, which I would think would be more under um, this words of affirmation, he would give her a card that had these, you know, flowery words on it. She would put it on her dresser and she would put, you know, confetti around it and and kind of enshrine that card and almost turn it into a gift see she would make that card more of a gift than than words of affirmation and so i would like to go around and i'm going to have to write these down so i can remember all of it so it's words of affirmation uh quality time because my website keeps wanting to tell me i'm getting a poor connection here it's gifts I never can remember these. It's acts of service or helping. And the last one is touch. And so oftentimes we, we know what our love language is, um, but oftentimes we don't. And I can tell you that you can change a relationship just by figuring out what the other person's love language is and then speaking their language. So once I learned that my daughter's love language was gifts, um, the next time I came home, and again, her room wasn't clean. <laughs> and, and we're talking, and Carmela's gonna laugh because Carmela knows my daughter really well. We're talking not only not clean, we're talking wet towels and glasses half full of milk under her bed. That's what we're talking. We're not talking just messy. We're, talk we're talking really messy. <laughs> and so, so anyway, um, when I realized her, her, her love language was gifts, when I came home the next time and she met me at the door and she goes, Mom, look, I found these little votives over at the dollar store and I got them for you. Well, instead of me going really you spent your day at the dollar store buying stupid stuff and you still didn't clean your room. But what I did is I received her gift. See, I didn't even give her a gift. I simply received her gift and I put it on the mantle. And then my mom came over and I said, look at the votive Jennifer got me. Isn't this the best? And my mom was like, yeah, that's really nice. And you know, the next day I came home and the whole house was clean. Her room, the dishes, the living room, everything was clean because all I did was I started speaking her love language. I didn't even give her a gift. I just received her gift. 
And so what I'm saying is, is if you're not speaking um, a person's love language, if you don't receive it, it hurts their feelings. Um, another a little side note, I, my youngest grandson, Corbin, and again, Carmela knows little Corbin, um, he's a helper. He is a helper. And if he, and so again, I can tell you right now, his love language is going to be acts of service. His love language is going to be helping. I can see it very clearly. That's what his love language is. And so no matter what I'm doing, I'll help you, Momo. I'll help you. And if, and if I'm busy, you know, and I'm trying to get to the end and I realize that him helping is actually going to slow me down. I'm like, no, Corbin, I don't want your help. He goes and cries. It hurts his little heart if I tell him I don't want his help. Well, once I realized that that was his love language, I give him a little job to do. And so that makes him feel like he's helping and it allows me to still get done what I'm trying to get done in the time I need to get it done in, but it makes him feel like he's a part of helping. And then I kind of make a big deal about it. Uh, you know, when, when his mom comes in, I'll say, Hey, look what Corbin did for me. And he just, you know, you can tell he's just beaming because that's his love language. So I want to go around. That's just a couple. Well, I'll give you one more example. I worked with a girl named Christy and she was in a relationship and this guy, she said, if I don't get a ring by Christmas, she goes, then the relationship is over. Because she said, I've been with him for a while now. And, uh, and that's the next step. And she said, and I'm, I'm just going to kind of hold firm that if I don't get a ring by Christmas, I'm going to maybe end the relationship. Well, he, he sensed that. So he said, well, let's just go away for the weekend. And so they went away. Uh, for those of you that are all in Ohio, <laughs> you probably know where Putin Bay is up on Lake Erie. So he took her away to Putin Bay for the weekend and she came back with a ring. And so we were all like, yay, Christy, you got your ring. And she says, I think I'm going to break up. And we're like, all you wanted was the ring. You wanted to, to get married to this guy. And now you got the ring. And she said, yeah, but she said we were at Putin Bay. And she said, I was so, so bored. She goes, he just wanted to sit on a bench and watch the sailboats go by. She said, I thought I was going to scream. Well, you know what that tells me? That tells me his love language was quality time. And the only thing I heard her complain about with him is she said, he never helps me. He just sits on the couch watching the football game and I'm doing the dishes and taking care of the kids and doing the laundry. And he's sitting there watching a football game. And he keeps saying, just come over here and sit with me. And she's like, well, who's going to get this stuff done? So you see what was happening. His was quality time. Hers was helps acts of service. They weren't speaking the same love language. And when she spent the weekend with him, he was ready to give her the, the ring because they were spending quality time. But in turn, she was bored to death and couldn't wait to get back home and away from just sitting on the, sitting on the dock of the bay. You know, that was not her thing because quality time was not her love language. So anyway, so there are some examples. So just in this conversation, can any of you, um, and, and it's okay if not, but can any of you kind of guess, or maybe you've read the book and already know, what is your love language? So Sally, how about you? What do you think? Service. And again, it's yours is service, acts of service, helping people. Okay. And again, it's words of affirmation, quality time, gifts and it doesn't mean expensive gifts it just means that anytime you want to show somebody you now we all speak all five you know we we you know we give gifts at christmas or whatever and so for some people my daughter jennifer hers is definitely gifts remember the story i told you about the little bonus she starts christmas shopping as soon as christmas is over she can't wait because it's all about i saw this great gift this person's gonna love it because that's her love language so um so Sally, tell me about your acts of service or helping. What made you decide that? Or uh, was it just really obvious once I went through the list or had you already known that? Well, it, what I do is help people. You know, I help people with their trips and I don't just help them because I want to make money. I help them because I want them to have a premium trip. I want them to have the best time ever. I, I want their vacations to be like it. I was planning my vacation. And, and the same- For those with, of you who uh, don't know, Sally is a tra 
travel agent, you see her little her little banner, Mermaid Travel, right behind her there, and she's amazing at what she does. And it's the same with the accessible travel. You know, I, I want people who think they can't travel to travel, to be able to travel um, and let them know that they can do that. It's not about selling my business. It's just letting them know. I want to next year start a support group for caregivers. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, service and no, Ed will tell me all the time, oh, you don't have to do this for me. You don't have to do that for me. I said, but I want to, <laughs> you know, I just want to. I don't, I mean, holy cow, he hasn't been able to do the dishes or anything this last <laughs> two weeks. I really miss that. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Mark, Mark is my dish doer as well. He says that yeah. I do so much. It's the one thing he can do and take that off of my list, off of my, you know. Yeah, so yeah he does like the litter box and, you know, feeds the cats and all that. So I've been doing that while he's been recovering. I said, two weeks. But, well, he's got another week before he can, he hasn't been able to raise his, his left arm ah. uh, above a certain point or lift anything over. Two pounds. He, he got a pacemaker put in. So, um, and his is very much quality time. Okay. Okay. So yours is acts of service and helping, and his is quality time. So, so he's always like, "Come over here and sit down with me, and mm -hmm. yep, spend time with me." Okay. okay. And I do that. And, because... and so you recognize that, and that's what makes for a good relationship because you recognize that. And again, we all speak all five, but I think we all have a primary one or two that really stand out. And uh, so Sally, yours is acts of service, helping folks. That's mine as well. I'm always wanting to help somebody, you know, get to the next level in, uh, in their business or whatever it is that they're doing. And so with Sally as a travel agent, she again is blogging and she is our co-mod co-facilitator for our blogging lane on how to monetize blogs how to write a blog and how to monetize it. And then she is also working on creating um, where she can um, help caregivers. And um, uh, we might in this particular group on uh, connections over coffee, your time to rise um, with us talking about nonprofits, we might be able to turn that uh, into a nonprofit um, and help Sally actually launched as a nonprofit. So let's move on to Kyle. Kyle, do you, what do you think? Do you, do you have an idea of what you think your love language might be? And have you heard of this before? Um, this is my first time hearing all about, um, all about, all about this list. Um, when I think, think about it, I would probably, I would say in the beginning, before I started my business, I was more into like quality time because when I was working at a job, you know, it was a lot of time that I felt like I was wasting and wasn't spending it with my kids and missing out on events and things. So quality time was like a big thing for me. Then once I started my company, um, it by nature, it just, it's, it's service and giving like the all day long. Cause now that I'm home now and having, own, having your own business now, um, a lot of my family it's you know beyond just you know trying to trying to maintain a business you know it's like i have many hats now i gotta you know play Susie homemaker and you make sure the dogs is taken out for a walk and you know just different things so for me it's for me it, it, it's service and you know it's it's one of them, one of them traits that i picked up you know as as i you know during this entrepreneurial journey so yeah clearly clearly plain as day so tell us about your entrepreneurial journey what what is it that what business do you have um so um during covid um so i was working for a uh, I, I got started in real estate as a lender working for a lending company and then once covid hit it kind of shut down operations to a certain extent. So I started Capital City Funding in January. And so now I decided to just branch off and 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 kind of do this, do this thing on my own. And I still do the same thing. And but now I do small business lending across the board. So it's not just real estate anymore. It's like small business lending. And um, we also do tax credits as well. So um, that's pretty much what I do. 
and you know by doing the workshops and i do podcasts and i do a lot of i do a lot more promotional videos and stuff now and just to give 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 and just kind of just make the make it be heard because it doesn't cost anything you know to to give somebody uh, to be a source to somebody and give them resources you know so it's invaluable and um but yeah that's that's pretty much what i do um and it's providing a quality service to people so I love that. I love that. Well, welcome. And I, you've shared before, but I wanted you to share with everyone on the call. Um, now, now, for those of you that want to connect um, throughout the month in between these calls, feel free to put your contact information in the chat and, uh, and we'll include you there on the platform so folks can get in touch with you if they want to connect with you either personally or for one of the services that you provide. So it's another way that I can help promote you and what you're doing. So, um, so Sally, we've already heard from you and Kyle, so please, please add your contact information in, uh, in the chat. Um, Carmela, how about you? What do you think your love language is? Um. At one point, I probably would have said um, more service, but I think I'm more of a the gift. I'm I'm a lot like your daughter Jenny um, because it's nothing big, but it's the little things, you know. Heck, sometimes it's like I'll go and grab an extra cup of coffee or drink and deliver it and drop it off to someone, you know, a friend or something. I'm just thinking of about you or my husband used to say I have stock in Hallmark because <laughs> I'm a card person because I have like a ton of cards and I've inherited some of my mom's cards because with everything her dimensions if she doesn't send them out so I send things out for her, but then I'm like oh I like this but I don't have to have a reason for anything okay I just I'll just send it because I like to you know, do nice things and encourage them, you know, so there could be a gift card in the card, you know, something for a Starbucks or something. So, and I do like picking up things because there's times I'm out like right after Christmas. Now this looks good for this person or somebody, you know, so-and-so would, you know, love this. That's, that's me. I'm a giver. Okay. okay. So gifts may be your primary and your acts of service and helping might be secondary for you. Yes, most definitely. Oftentimes when we think back to our favorite Christmas, which is where I started with all this, it kind of will give way to, to what your, your love language is. If you think back to your earliest favorite Christmas, my earliest favorite Christmas was helping my mom bake cookies for the family on, for Christmas, for the Christmas holiday. And anytime I could help her, I, that's what I remember the most. I can't, I can't remember any real special gifts that I got over the years, but boy, oh boy, do I remember helping her bake cookies and get ready. So that's, that's why I, I knew early on that mine was, was definitely acts of service and helping. Um, now, again, I, I did get some big gifts over the years that I remember because they were something that I really, really, really wanted. <laughs> and I remember those. But um, my life doesn't usually lead with the gifts like Carmela or my daughter Jennifer, where they're always buying little gifts for everybody. And again, it doesn't gifts doesn't mean expensive. It just, you know, um, for a child, it's something they make, you know, because they don't have the money to buy something. So they're always making you something. And that's a good sign that their language is gifts. So it's good to kind of watch the kids and the grandkids and kind of see what their love languages are. Uh, Raj, how about you? Um, is this something new for you or, or have you heard of the five love languages before? This particular topic, the five love languages, I think I have heard it first time, but I can definitely relate with that because I have my own version of, you know, thinking okay. about that, like, for me, I feel like that listening is one of the best qualities. I always believe in listening to the people, like what is happening or what would happen if you meet so many people out there. Most of them, they always keep talking about their things, you know. So I always try to listen. I always try to listen to the people, what they are going through. And this is one of the most important quality, I think, that sometimes we should be empathetic 
to others. We should try to understand their situation. We should try to put ourselves in their shoes and we should try to think that what kind of things they are going through. So that is one of the most important things according to me. And that is one of my love language that I always try to follow in my family. And apart from that, there are so many things we always try to do, like be respectful to others, always try to understand someone else's situation and be grateful what we have. Gratitude is one of the most important things. Self-love, self-acceptance. So there are so many things we always try to follow. Yeah. Thank you for that. Thank you so much. Yes, I, I can see where um, a lot of the attributes can, can fall under some of these five love languages. Um, and gratitude, that was my word for 2021. Gratitude was my word for the year. And so I tried to encapsulate that in everything that I did. And so now in 2022, my word is giving. And there's a whole topic on, uh, on your word for the year. Um, I want to jump back over to Carmela real quick. Um, uh, Kyle and Sally mentioned what it is that they do. Carmela, share with us what it is that you do just for the group so that we know all about you. Um, I do like a little bit of everything. Um, I am a wellness advocate for doTERRA essential oils. So I am. Um, do the oils, the essential oils, and help people with that. Um, I also am in a business with a girlfriend of mine, and it's called B and C Entities, and it's real estate investing. So we're getting into the real estate realm there. Um, then, for what I was doing, and I'm kind of getting back into, um, I had a business called Carmela's Touch. And it was like gift baskets and events and things like that. And there's your gifts I, coming out again, Carmela. Look, I slowly tried to pull away and then I'm being pulled back into it again. So I know I guess I never did really it just took a hiatus for a while. And now it's <laughs> re coming about again. So very nice. Feel free, I know you're on your phone and you're traveling, but feel free to put your contact information in the, in the chat. I, I was doing that, yep. So okay. you'll... <laughs> Good. And Raj, how about you? Is there a way that we can connect with you? Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to put my email information in there. Perfect. I'll give you a moment and tell us what it is. Is there some way that, that, um, I mean, do you have your own company or are you, I, I'm not quite familiar with, uh, I know you're in technology, but do you have your own company where you're looking for clients or are you working for a larger company? So there are two parts of this, Kathy, actually. The first part is that definitely I'm working for different Fortune 500 companies. I have almost 15 years of experience and I know my field very well. At the same time, I'm in a process of starting my own company because I know how things work and I'm trying to build a team. And uh, as we all have to pay our bills so I cannot afford to leave my job. I have to do my job, but at the same time, I'm in process of, you know, starting my own thing. So definitely I am looking forward to that. Perfect. If there's a way uh, that we can connect with you, please feel free to add that. We would love to stay in contact. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sally had to jump off. Um, she had another commitment here at 11 o'clock. We're a little bit over our time. Um, any last comments while folks get all of that entered into um, the chat? Um, I don't want to end the call until you've had a chance to, uh, to publish there in the chat. Uh, any last comments from anyone? We'll wait just a moment for folks. I see Sally has put hers in. I've got mine in and Kyle has his. Um, okay, Raj has his. And so, and Carmela's in the car. Pressure. There she is. So Camilla has hers. All right, perfect. I love it. 
thank you everyone so much for coming on board today. I really appreciate you being here. Um, again, in January, um, we're gonna again share, build relationships. I wanna promote all of you and what you're doing. Um, I'll put it out in our, the platform, which is the Kathy Benner International Academy. Again, we've got the Facebook groups all listed there. We have the meetup group all listed there. So there's all kinds of ways that folks are going to be able to find your contact information and connect with you and what it is that you do. I want part of my giving back is I want to help promote you. And so that's that's why we're here today. So thank you so much. And we will see everyone. Oh, she said she's in the mountains now. Happy holidays. In other words, she might lose contact with us. But we're going to sign off and we'll see everyone next month. So we'll see you then. Bye.